When a patient is suffering from the symptoms of a cardiac event, seconds count. During a STEMI, or ST segment elevation myocardial infarction, a patient's artery becomes blocked, preventing adequate blood flow. Every second that passes results in more damage to their heart. Getting that patient to a cardiac catheterization lab where the blockage can be treated is critical. The sooner it can be done, the more likely the patient survives and maintains their quality of life. It takes a team of people working together to get the patient to the cath lab for rapid reperfusion therapy. The national standard for reperfusion therapy in a STEMI is 90 minutes. Achieving it, particularly among those patients who live far from the nearest cath lab, requires a well-developed plan. Teamwork, dedication, and efficiency in every step of the process are critical, from the first responders to the transfer team to the hospital staff. The goal of this video is to demonstrate the best practices for the response and transfer of STEMI patients. In this video, you will see each step of the STEMI process and protocol specific to our STEMI region. This protocol is based on guideline recommendations with feedback and assistance from our regional partners, as well as years of research and data compiled by New Hanover Regional Medical Center. Together, we are making a significant difference in the care of our patients. In a code STEMI scenario, the patient will report symptoms of a cardiac event to the local 911 service. I think I need someone to send an ambulance, please. Symptoms suggestive of a possible cardiac event are chest pain, nausea, shortness of breath, diaphoresis, arm pain, neck pain, jaw pain, epigastric pain or indigestion, syncope, or potentially any acute onset of discomfort from the waist up. We need to do an EKG and some vital signs on you. I think you may be having a cardiac event. Criteria of a STEMI are ST elevation of one millimeter or more in two contiguous leads and the presence of cardiac symptoms. All right, he meets STEMI criteria. Go ahead and activate code STEMI. Central, this is Medic 1. We have a code STEMI. Please have Airlink meet us in Holly Ridge for a STEMI pickup. Medic 1, I copy code STEMI. Well, if you are requesting Airlink, Airlink for a STEMI transfer, you should contact your 911 dispatch center, who will connect you to the NHRMC Regional Transfer Center. You must indicate to the Regional Transfer Center that you are requesting Airlink for a code STEMI. If the patient is being transferred to New Hanover Regional Medical Center by ground, you should communicate directly with the NHRMC Emergency Department and notify them that you are transferring a code STEMI. The emergency department staff will call the NHRMC Regional Transfer Center. Clear and precise communication is critical. The NHRMC Regional Transfer Center will activate the STEMI team at New Hanover Regional Medical Center and notify them that they need to be ready for an incoming STEMI patient. Airlink 1, need a weather check. Holly Ridge Ballfield, back to New Hanover, reference the STEMI. Flight Ops Airlink 1 copies weather check, stand by. Once it is established that the patient is experiencing a STEMI, you must move carefully, but rapidly. A landing zone should be selected so that if Airlink is unable to fly to the chosen landing zone, the patient is still moving toward definitive care. Do not delay transfer of the patient. The most beneficial treatment for STEMI patients is rapid reperfusion. Other therapies are important, but secondary to the need for rapid transfer, unless the patient experiences a life-threatening arrhythmia requiring immediate intervention. In general, IVs and medications should be initiated or administered while en route to definitive care. Flight Ops, Airlink 1, weather's good. In order to save valuable time, the helicopter should arrive at the landing zone first, followed by EMS. Hi sir, my name is Karen. This is my partner Jeff. We work for Airlink. We're going to be flying into the Hanover Regional Medical Center, okay? Gentleman's 59 years old. He presented to us with a mid-sternal chest pain that radiates to the left arm. No medical history, no allergies, and no medications. To this point, we've given him 324 milligrams of aspirin PO as well as three sublingual nitro, and we're administering an inch of nitro paste. He has an 18 gauge IV in the right AC. Um, we activated code STEMI based off of his EKG showing elevation and leads two, three, and AVS. It is vital that EMS hands the patient's diagnostic EKG tracing to the Airlink crew prior to transporting the patient. 
Without the EKG, the patient will not be able to move through the STEMI process in a timely manner. The EMS to Airlink handoff should take less than 10 minutes. It is the responsibility of the EMS crew to provide a verbal report by phone or radio to the new Hanover Regional Medical Center Emergency Department with the patient's clinical information and EKG findings to notify the emergency department that the code STEMI patient has been handed off to Airlink. If the patient is being transported by ground, it is vital to provide the verbal report and code STEMI notification to the emergency department as soon as possible. Flight Ops, Airlink 1. Four souls on board, one plus one zero in fuel, be lifting from Holly Ridge, code STEMI, estimating 15 minutes to New Hanover, risk assessment problem. In flight, Airlink will deliver an updated patient report to the New Hanover Regional Medical Center Emergency Department. All code STEMIs that come from the field are required to make a pit stop in the ED before proceeding to the cath lab to confirm that the patient is appropriate for cardiac catheterization. A designated member of the cath team will call time out, at which point all will be quiet for the relay of patient information. The diagnostic EKG should always be provided to the cath team and cardiologist on arrival. The cardiologist will base their procedure steps on the findings from the EKG. It is important that the patient handoff is efficient and handled calmly and that the information is presented clearly. All right, sounds great. Let's get them on the table. Thanks. IV drips should be used only for stabilization. Do not use IV heparin or nitroglycerin drips. We're going to get you ready for your heart catheterization. Ready to move the table. Mr. Elder, I'm Dr. Weaver. I'm going to be taking care of you while you're here. In the cardiac cath lab, the cardiologist will open the patient's blocked artery with a balloon or stent to restore proper blood flow. In a raised STEMI scenario, the patient will present to the hospital emergency department with symptoms of a cardiac event. The goal of timely treatment is the same in a raised STEMI, However, there are some differences in the process. This scenario will highlight some of the key differences, such as the activation and transfer processes. In addition, a race STEMI does not require a pit stop in the NHRMC emergency department. Hello, may I help you? Yes, I'm, I'm having some chest pain. And in order to help facilitate a faster response in a race STEMI, a protocol should be in place identifying which patients should receive a rapid EKG based on presenting symptoms. This helps ensure patients with atypical symptoms also receive a rapid EKG. Yes, I have an EKG there to be going to room 12. Last name is Riley. Miss Riley, my name's Linda and I'm here to do an EKG on you, okay? Criteria of a STEMI are ST elevation of one millimeter or more, in two contiguous leads and the presence of cardiac symptoms. The EKG results are then presented to the emergency physician. She's complaining of chest pain times one hour. This is the EKG that we have. The ED physician will make a rapid determination of whether the patient meets criteria for STEMI activation. The time from the EKG to STEMI activation should be less than five minutes. I'm gonna contact the transfer center and have them activate the race STEMI protocol. STEMI Hotline, this is Cindy. Yes, hello, this is Dr. Leonard over at Columbus Regional Healthcare System in Whiteville. Hey, Dr. Leonard. A call is then made to the NHRMC Regional Transfer Center. The Regional Transfer Center will ask the physician basic questions pertaining to the patient's condition and then activate the okay, STEMI team. I'll activate the STEMI team. Okay, I'll hold, thank you. Airline 2, this is flight off for weather check. Airline 2, go ahead. Airlink 2, we have a race STEMI, Columbus County Hospital ED. Coming back to New Hanover. Airlink 2 is taking the weather, Columbus County Hospital back to New Hanover. Flaps, Airlink 2, weather's good. 
During the call with the referring hospital, the NHRMC Regional Transfer Center will initiate a conference call between the referring emergency physician and the receiving cardiologist. Dr. Weaver, I have Dr. Leonard from Columbus County on the line with a race STEMI. Could you hold, please? Okay. Dr. Weaver, you're connected to Dr. Leonard. Hey, Dr. Leonard, this is Dave Weaver, cardiology. Hi, Dr. Weaver. We have a 62-year-old female presents with chest pain times one hour. New Hanover Regional Medical Center has auto accept for STEMI patients. NHRMC will always accept a STEMI patient from the region, regardless of bed availability or other factors. Okay. We will see her when she gets here. Great. Thank you very much. Dr. Weaver, I have dispatched AirLink, activated them at this time. Okay. It should be about 30-minute ETA. We'll send a page when AirLink lands. Thank you. Ma'am, we've reviewed your EKG and we feel that you might be having a heart attack. So what we're going to do now is fly you out to New Hanover Regional Medical Center and we're going to send you down to the cath lab and if we need to, we're going to unblock your artery at that time. Once the STEMI team has been activated, you should begin your STEMI treatment plans based on Zone 1 or Zone 2 recommendations. We're going to go ahead and get you ready for air length. They've In preparation for a rapid patient handoff, the ED nurse should be at the bedside here, with the patient's bed raised to the highest position. The patient and family members should already be informed that a rapid transfer will occur and all paperwork, including the EKG and STEMI handoff form, completed. The completion of any additional paperwork should not delay transfer of the patient. Additional paperwork can be faxed to the NHRMC Regional Transfer Center following the patient transfer. Organizing, planning, and accurate transfer of patient information are key to the handoff occurring in less than 10 minutes. We followed the race STEMI protocol. She's got an 18 in both ACs and her vital signs are stable. All right, Minimize unnecessary procedures during the handoff process. Place multifunctional defibrillation pads on the patient prior to departure. IV drip should only be used for stabilization. Do not use IV heparin or nitroglycerin drips. Four souls on board, one plus one zero on fuel, estimating 15 minutes to New Hanover. Pit stop in the emergency department is not required for race STEMI transfers. Proceed directly to the cardiac cath lab. It is important that the patient handoff is efficient and handled calmly and that the information is presented clearly. The diagnostic EKG should always be provided to the cath team and cardiologist on arrival. The cardiologist will base their procedure steps on the findings from the EKG. As members of the STEMI team, we do not always realize the impact of our individual efforts. Sometimes hearing from the people we have helped can remind us just how important each team member's contributions are in the lives of actual STEMI patients. My name is Jack Gallagher, and I'm a STEMI survivor. I flatlined. And although I didn't know it at the time, that's what I found out later. And uh, then the next thing I knew, I was waking up in recovery. If we'd have missed it by five minutes, 10 minutes, whatever it might have been, I wouldn't be here today to you know, relate my story. From the time that we called 911 until the first responders arrived at the house, well, it was just a matter of uh, three to four minutes. The EMT started with the EKG, and immediately they recognized that, uh, what they called a code STEMI, which I had no idea what they were talking about. But uh, everybody there responded very quickly because evidently they were trained in a code STEMI protocol. They knew exactly what they had to do. They were very well trained, very professional, dedicated. It's just an amazing thing how one thing plays right into the other, and each one of the teams work together. They understand what uh, their role is, and. It's amazing to me that uh, on such a local regional level, we've got such uh, tremendous professionals that understand what to do to save lives. And that's exactly what they did. They saved my life. 
the whole region is very fortunate to have New Hanover Regional Medical Center in this area that is uh, so well equipped to take care of STEMI patients. Now that I've got that new stent put in place, that uh, I feel like the classic 57 Chevy with a brand new Corvette engine. They did a hell of a job. <laughs> When each team member understands the importance of their individual role in these processes, valuable time can be saved and patient outcomes can be improved. Having a comprehensive understanding of the STEMI process and following standard protocols will save lives. Thank you for your teamwork and dedication to our patients.